Welcome to the Growth Now Movement. I'm your host, Justin Shank. I'm an entrepreneur, speaker, and podcaster who years ago decided to go on a journey on how to grow in all areas of my life. What I found out was it's really a matter of focusing on the four pillars of life, business, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. And that's what we do here. We explore how to continuously grow in those areas, all while having a ton of fun doing it. I'm really excited you're on this journey with me. Now let's get to this week's episode. This week, I sit down with Kelly Chase. Now, if you guys recall, in the very beginning of quarantine, there were two shows on Netflix that every single person binged. One was The Tiger King, and two was Love is Blind. And you may recognize the name Kelly Chase from the show Love is Blind as she was one of the cast members who went all the way to the end and famously known as being proposed to and saying no. Now, I will admit that I watched the show, just like every single other person on the planet. I forget what the number was, but it was something like 60 million people watched this show. Uh, I say it in the episode, so if I'm way off, it's my fault. Um, But I absolutely enjoyed the premise of it, and and it was truly uh, a great watch. Now, Kelly was somebody who was very real and honest uh, and really shared her journey from a very loving perspective versus trying to get the limelight, if that makes sense. And so in this episode, we talk about that. We talk about what it was like going from pretty much obscurity to being on this television show that overnight launched her into fame and how she was able to handle that from an imposter syndrome standpoint, from a mindset standpoint, and so much more. You see, Kelly has gone on to become a mindset coach. As a matter of fact, uh, she actually helps women overcome burnout and master their self-worth and unleash their goddess magic. And this is just really her sharing what she's learned through her journeys, what she's learned through her coaches. uh, And we get into all that stuff. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this conversation. You're going to love her energy and you're going to love everything she brings to the table. In the meantime, she also has a podcast that you want to definitely check out. Uh, So make sure you go look that up. We mentioned it in the show as well. Now, before we get to the episode, I want to ask you guys, just like I do every week, to head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. I love reading every single one of them. I just got an epic one from Great Britain from Fergus M. who said, really enjoyed listening and as always, a great line of questioning. So Fergus, thank you so much, man. Shout out to you. Uh, And so I want to do that going forward. If you guys leave a review, I'll read it here in the beginning um, because I truly appreciate every single thing that you guys do. Now, without further ado, let's get to the episode with Kelly Chase. Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I am uh, I am beyond excited about this conversation. Fun fact, I've shared this with you on Clubhouse, which is where we connected with uh, Samantha Joy hosting the show. And I shared with you that in the beginning of the pandemic, just like the rest of America, I watched two things. I watched The Tiger King and I watched Love is Blind. Uh, and you were one of the individuals on that show who uh, stuck around. You, you formed a connection with somebody and you were there for the whole entire show. Um, and so when Samantha was like, Hey, will you come like help on this panel? I was like, yes, I know who (laughs) Kelly is. I would love to be on this panel. So I'm excited to have this conversation and talk about, you know, your journey in life, how number one, how you ended up on that show. Number two, what was the purpose of you ending up on that show? And, and number three, where are you now? And let's, and let's dive into all of that and the mindset that you've had to develop over the last couple of years, um, to really create the incredible life that you're living now. But why don't we take a second and talk about who is Kelly today, and then we'll break down how you got there. Okay. Yeah. So today, Kelly, (laughs) the Kelly today is, um, I feel like I'm creating the exact motto that I have for everyone else. I'm creating the life that I crave. Um, I'm a mindset coach full-time as of five weeks ago. And so exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, and I've just been radically like remembering every tool and strategy and method that I have learned through my own, uh, studies and mentorship and just implementing everything into my life right now, surrendering, trusting the, the universe is fully supporting me. And, um, you know, it's just been so radical to be so present with my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's such a beautiful thing because so, I mean, my whole life, I feel like I was never really truly present, um, up until now, you know, so it's kind of a really cool moment that I'm going through. I feel like I'm like evolving and just like emerging into this beautiful butterfly. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah. And just kind of seeking, I'm, I'm watching things happen and watching opportunities come in. And, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a student myself. I am constantly learning and I'm currently going through a Bob Proctor program right now. So mm. yeah, just 
shifting my paradigms, just truly trusting and believing that it, what is meant for me is on its way to me. And that's the, I mean, that's what I try and help my clients, you know, deliver to my clients as well. So it's been, a, it's just interesting. Like my life is just really interesting right now. And I was telling you, I'm like going through my closets. I, I literally am like just getting rid of things that don't serve me. Like got rid of the nine to five. I'm getting rid of clothes. I'm getting rid of shoes. <laughs> I'm just living the life of how I want things to be. And I think that we all can, can have that and do that too. Yeah, no, I, I love that you said that. And like the one thing that I really heard in, in there was, I started implementing all these things that I've learned over the years and something I say all the time, because I, be, I became a student of self-development when I was 19 years old, because I was mm -hmm. lost and I didn't know what I wanted in my life. And I read all the books and then I listened to all the podcasts and I tried to motivate myself through YouTube videos and all these other things. And I'm like, why isn't any of this working? Like, why can't I figure this out? Like I had multiple failed businesses that I tried to launch and all this stuff. And, and people go, well, what's the difference? Like, what did you do differently? And I go, I've started to implement all the things I learned. Before I was just like this sponge, which is super powerful for a phase of your life. But when you begin to implement it, all of a sudden you went, wow, some of this stuff actually works. Some of it doesn't, by the way, um, but some of this stuff actually works. So I love that you said that. What was the big shift for you, you know, when you were like, you know, it's time for me to, to claim this for myself and really begin to take that action? Yeah, um, I actually had two anxiety attacks in February. Um, mm -hmm. And I really, well, I'm assuming that's what it was because it's something I never felt before and didn't love the experience. Um, but in that moment, I was like, something has to give. And I, I actually went home, stayed with my parents for a week and no offense to my parents. I love them dearly, but I usually, I usually can only be home for like a day, 24, maybe 48 hours, but I spent five days with them. And at the end of that fifth day, I still was like, no, I could probably stay here for a little bit longer. Right. I would just beside myself and the thought of me going back to work that following Monday, because I took, you know, I took the whole PTO off the whole five days off thought of me going back to work. I was like, uh, -uh. like it was like, creating more anxiety again in my head. And I was like, that, that's the thing that is what is creating this. Like I, I am not showing up as my best self anymore. And I haven't been for a little while now. And so I, I recognized too, after the anxiety attacks, I was like, you know, I probably should have after the show taken some time off from working and I didn't. And I recognize again, it's all of our own, you know, stuff that we have going on. And I'm a people pleaser. I'm a deeply rooted people pleaser. And mm -hmm. I like to, I like to know that I can handle things. And I've been the rock in my family for a while. I've just, so I was like, Oh, I can handle this. Yeah. Like I can work nine to five. I can continue to do my business. I can do all the podcasts. I can show up and be everywhere and be available to everyone. And that caught up to me, which, you know, like I said, it just created those anxiety attacks. And I was like, yeah, that's not, I, and I'm not going to stop coaching. Like that's my passion, connecting with people and helping them, you know, have all these realizations too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was like, wow, I am totally not practicing what I preach and I am sitting here in burnout and I got to let it go. So yeah, the anxiety attacks are, were a big wake up call for me, but you know, it's, it's interesting how people, it's like, we wait until it gets bad until we do something about our life sometimes, you know? Right. So, so um, what, <laughs> well, I mean, obviously I, I get that, right? Like I've been there, I've been on the burnout, I've had the day job, but I was living this other life of Mr. Podcast because the podcast blew up, but the business didn't make sense. And, you know, I couldn't imagine to see what it was like to be on this television show that was on Netflix that was watched by, I Googled it a couple of weeks ago when we first connected and now I forget, it's like 16 million people or 16 wow. million households or something like that, um, watched this show. And then, so you went from relatively unknown to 16 million people, one of the most talked about shows. And if Tiger King didn't exist, by the way, at that time, like it would have been even more. Like, yeah. let's be honest. Did you watch Tiger King, by the way? I think I watched the first episode and I was like, this is stupid. And I turned <laughs> it off. <laughs> I, love, I love it. So, I mean, it was the only thing that got me through the first couple of weeks of the pandemic, if I had to be honest. Uh, but, you know, with, with that being said, you went from relatively unknown to 16 million people now know who you are. You're, I'm sure your social media blew up. I'm sure all these things happened. Uh, and then you go, you're like, I'm still living this, working this day job, doing all these things, right? W did that lend to the anxiety? Did that lend to the panic attack, do you think? 
Yeah, I think so. Like I said, I, I feel like I probably should have taken like a week or, or at least a week. If I was not, gonna say more than that. Not a month off of working. Um, but yeah, again, I think I just kept like, oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And there were days I was t- so tired and I don't drink coffee. So <laughs> it was a lot. Um, yeah. and, and yes, we did transition obviously to working from home and I was productive. What I loved is that I I was still hit a milestone within that company. Like you have to hit like a certain thing within the first year and you get some type of award or, you know, get recognized, acknowledged. And I hit that. And it was kind of not to say like after that, like the last six months, but I would probably say the last six months of me working there, I was like, not, like I said, just not showing up as my best self. I, I just couldn't focus anymore. I was like, this is, I'm done. I got the award. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, it was just a lot. So yes, it definitely just affected and just the energy of, I mean, yeah, I think I had maybe like 7,000 followers prior to the show launching or releasing. And afterwards, I mean, I was close to 500,000. Um, Jesus. And it was just like, whoo, like I, yes, one, I am very glad that I had been doing a lot of personal development work and mindset stuff because I understand that, you know, where negative comments come from and things like that. I mean, it's just projections of people and them not understanding or whatever. And so I was able to navigate that better than maybe most people could have. Um, but it still affects you. You're still human. And it did affect me. And there were times where I just felt like, how do I, like, I should probably just get off social media and just like not show up. And, but then I'm like, well, I have a coaching business, which is all online. So I need to show up and I have to show up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's that, yeah. it's that fun, that fun game of like, well, I have to be there for my business, but I don't really want to be there. But then I'm, now I find I'm spending so much time on social media and like all these other things. And I, I couldn't even imagine that type of overnight explosion. Like uh, I would be extremely overwhelmed. I have another friend uh, who, uh, was on a reality television show and he's a good friend of mine. And I remember the first, one of the first conversations we had, like kind of offline, he was talking about, um, you know, just how re- re- crazy it was every day, every week when one of the episodes would drop, he was just like, my, my inbox was insane. Like I didn't know how to really handle it. And then you almost become numb to it. Like, as it's like, okay, this is just how it is. Right. Uh, and I imagine that's kind of where it got to for you, where you're like, I'm just going to ignore just gonna yeah. ignore this stuff as best you as best you could. I don't know if I could handle that kind of that kind of onslaught of attention. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this all brings me this long rambling rant all brings me to what drew you to being on the show. I imagine there was an audition process or whatever. What was it? Was it the love? Were you actually looking for love, or was it? Hey, look, this is a great opportunity for me to blow up my platform. Which, I, by the way, no judgment there either because I I did audition for one show. The show never took off, but I auditioned wow. for one because of <laughs> hey, I could blow up my platform. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, okay. So this is just a funny story. Um, I even met, I, I referenced this guy, like one of my ex-boyfriends on the show, I actually mentioned him. Um, but anyways, so this was a relationship from years ago, um, to probably like two years after we stopped dating, I received a text message. Like we became friends, whatever. I received a text message from him and he's like, Hey, I got contacted by a casting director, like a casting agency. They pitched this like love dating relationship show to me. I can't do it because of my job, but I think you'd be really good at it. So I gave them your information and I was like, okay, I don't know. (laughs) Like, do you not think that I can find my own love? (laughs) 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 Well, that, um, but anyway, so kind of like, owe this all to him, but, um, anyways, yeah. So I got the call from the casting agency and it was actually, um, for married at first sight. (laughs) Oh, site and so I started going through the interview process with them and got served my contract and I was like yeah no I'm not doing this show. <laughs> I was like bye I think I just I like that, that has to happen a lot with that show yeah I'm sure like I mean yeah. so in in fairness I haven't watched that show um but I get the premise of it right, right. like I couldn't I I would totally be like okay bad idea this is yeah. not not a good idea yeah yeah exactly and the thought I was like wait a second like the first the first episode is you walking down the aisle to this person you've never met before like yeah my mom would murder me yeah. so I was just like no I think I I don't even know if I responded to the email once I got the contract I'm or I was just like yeah I'm not interested anymore bye <laughs> <laughs> but so anyways fast forward a few years later and I receive a call and it's California number and I was like huh, it's interesting I don't know California number anyways pick it up 
casting team and they're like, they pitched this show to me and they're like, Hey, um, just wondering if you're still single. <laughs> I was like, they're like, we have your file still. I'm like, I am still single. Yes. Um, okay. And then, like I said, they just pitched the show to me and I was, I was very, very just interested and intrigued by the, obviously the concept of everything, like, oh, meet someone behind a wall, like blind dating basically. And maybe you meet your forever that way. I had different thoughts going on. Um, Earlier that year was when I started my whole personal development journey. Mm -hmm. And so I was, everything in my life had changed at that point anyways. Like I was just like, doing completely, I used to be a social butterfly here in Atlanta and I was staying in on Friday and Saturday nights, like reading books, listening to podcasts. Like my parents yeah. were like, is there something wrong with you? <laughs> Why aren't you <laughs> hanging out with your friends anymore? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm just changing my life because nothing changes if nothing changes. And the life that I was living, I was experiencing the same results every week. So I was like, if you want me to get married someday, like I need to change shit. So anyways, they pitched the show to me and I was so intrigued by it. I was just like, you know what? One opportunity leads to another opportunity. I don't know. Maybe I will meet someone who knows. I mean, I'm really picky though. So I doubt that's going to happen. And I was like, but who knows? Could have a friend, maybe someone's whatever. I don't even know. Yeah. I, didn't, I mean, we weren't even sure if the show was technically going to get aired either, you know, at that point. Right. But I don't know. A part of me too. I, when I was younger and people used to ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say teacher, actor, and baby doctor. Um, so I was like, well, this might be an opportunity to shine my light and be a star. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't know. So that was, I mean, that's what kind of like motivated me was just like, take a risk. I mean, you're, you've already changed so much of your life at this point. Why not do something that's going to, you know, change, could change a lot of other things for you. And I didn't do it. Um, I remember I had a conversation with the casting director and I was like, you know, I'm actually at really hesitant to move forward with this. I said, because it is a reality show. I have watched bachelor. I get it. They get produced. You know, there are editing, there is editing that's involved. And I was like, I, I am a health coach at that point. I was like, I'm a health coach. I have a really good reputation. I do not want my reputation to be, you know, compromise and they were like we're not trying to ruin anyone's life and I'm like yeah I get it you know I get it so I was just like all right Cal let's do it <laughs> we'll do it I mean I think if I was in that same boat I would probably do the same thing um and like I think it's funny that the idea of like well hey look if if I'm going to get married maybe this is the opportunity or the way I'm going to meet somebody right it, it was almost the thought of online dating about 10 years ago like oh I don't know who cares. Like maybe this is the way that we're going to meet somebody. I, so I met my girlfriend on Bumble. I certainly (laughs) never thought that I would meet anybody on a dating site that I, you know, thought was going to be the person. Right. And so you never know. And I think that's a really funny take and look, Hey, the end of the day, um, life's supposed to be fun. Right. And so why not give something like that a try? I'm sure if a reality show came calling now, I'd be like, yeah, you know what, let's, let's give it a try. Let's see what comes of it. Have some fun. And whatever, maybe I'll have 500,000 followers on Instagram overnight. (laughs) That's, that's just crazy. Um, And so what has it done for you as far as, you know, obviously you shifted from a health coach, because I, I heard that part of the story when we were in the clubhouse room, where you're like, (laughs) they said that I was a a health coach on the thing, because during the interview process, or whatever, by the time it came out, I had shifted my my business, what where did the shift come from for you? Were you just done talking about health? Well, yes, but so after the show, um, you know, I had gone seven weeks without working and my prior to, I was a fitness trainer for an app. And while we were during, during filming, I received a phone call like, Hey, the trainers in Atlanta are getting discontinued. So I was losing my job. (laughs) So didn't have coaching clients losing my other like part-time income coming in. And I was like, great. I have no money. (laughs) I have no money. And my whole world just got flipped upside freaking down. Um, my brain felt like mush. I was like depressed. I, it was just, just extremely chaotic for me. And probably a month after we got done filming, I invested in a business and mindset coach. Cause I was like, well, if anything, might as well get my business back to where it needs, but I need help. Like I I can't do this on my own. So I invested in this girl, Erin Porter, and she, I always joke with her. I'm like, you did more for my mindset than you did my business, but that's the season of life that I needed. I needed that. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I mean, she was like a therapist for me. I mean, we went into like deep into my deep rooted stories, my limiting beliefs, all these fears, my, all of these behavioral patterns that I, you know, expressed on a day-to-day basis that I wasn't even aware of and what story it was connected to or what limiting belief it was connected to. And I was like, holy shit, you like a mind blowing sessions every single week. And I was like, I have to do this. Whatever you just did to me, I have to do this. And I had already, um, prior to actually filming the show, I had gone through like a, I'm a kind of like a marketing, like a business strategy course. So I learned a lot about niche and creating digital courses and, you know, offering high ticket offers, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm like, I knew the business side of it too. Plus I was learning that with Aaron in addition to all the mindset stuff and the energetics that go behind everything. And like, that was it. I was like, I have to change everything that I'm doing. So I did, but it was, uh, it was uh, challenging because like I said, I mean, it's like everything that I was, you don't necessarily learn it and implement it that fast. It doesn't necessarily become a part of you that quickly, although you want it to. Um, so it was, it was definitely a rough time. I felt like on social media, cause obviously that's where I'm running my business and people are like, what is she talking about all of a sudden? You know, she's not talking, about, she's not showing her food anymore. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? So it was hard. And then I was like, great, I'm still not getting any clients because I'm in this transition phase and I still don't have money coming in. So I, um, you know, I guess I pursued the nine to five world again. And I, that's when I was there for a year and eight months and five weeks ago, that's when I, you know, transitioned back out of that. But it was definitely a step in the right direction. I needed that to support Mm -hmm. myself, obviously, and pay my bills. (laughs) So I wasn't homeless, but it was, yeah, it was just so much. I feel like I've been, I have uh, been dealt with a lot of different challenges in life. Um, I mean, I've gone through my own health and weight issues to financial struggles, to relationship struggles, to career and business shit. Like I feel like I've gone through all the things. (laughs) I get it. I mean, there's so many parallels minus a a hit television show. There's so many parallels in your life and in mine, as far as, uh, you know, I tried to do my own thing and, and it didn't work out. I had to go back and get a job for, I think it was like 13 months. And then I was able to kind of figure it out. And then, uh, during those 13 months and I was able to kind of leave my job and, and one, and that's when I really started to implement. Um, and you know, people know the story and it's, I'll, I'll make it as short as possible, but I actually got fired from my last job um, because apparently I intimidated my CEO. Uh, I don't know what that meant because I'm not an intimidating man, um, <laughs> but I got fired and, and I was, I saw this thing on the side, but it wasn't quite at the point where uh, it was like paying the bills. Right. And so I, right after I got fired, I went and spoke at an event in Florida uh, because I was, I was getting hired to speak at places because of my podcast, but the business side wasn't taking off yet. And I met up with another speaker and we had a conversation and it shifted my mindset about business and how to approach it. And I made $22,000 in the next three weeks and I have yeah. never looked back and, and business has been good ever since. And I've been, I've been fortunate, but again, it's that shift in mindset and then the implementation of like, what is it really? And it doesn't happen overnight. Like I was just away in Austin for five days with my mastermind that I'm a part of. And I learned so much. And a lot of that stuff isn't going to get implemented until six, seven months from now, because there's just so much. And so like, how do you handle that? And so what is it that you teach your clients as far as like mindset? By the way, it's really funny. I'm wearing my mindset over everything shirt, (laughs) which um, I was like, oh, that's kind of ironic. I didn't even realize when I put it on this morning. Um, But what is it that you teach your clients as far as like when we're in those moments of despair, getting caught up in the hecticness of what's happening in our life. How do we shift our mindset so we can then focus and begin to implement like you've done over the last five months? Yeah. um, Honestly, it's allowing them and, and holding space for them to kind of like first have their breakdown, then to me, tell me the things that they're going through, of course, but bringing them to the present moment, uh, whether that is breath work or just sitting there and kind of doing some affirmations Uh, because we're so caught up in the do, 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 and the go, go, go in life. And obviously that's a lot of societal programming there, helping them to understand like that is societal programming. Like you were living in this lifestyle and I work with women mostly. um, And the way women do things is just different than men, but men can do these things too. And I have learned a great deal of like the difference between feminine and masculine energy. So I talk a lot about that and just being more and allowing and opening yourself up to receive because when you're in that do, 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 and that go, 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 you don't have space for the being, you don't have space to open up to receive. So, you know, I 
yeah, I mean, that's pretty much like what I do to help them out is to help them understand what that concept is and how they can apply it in their life and create the space for it. You know, I always, it's so funny because like on social media, people are always like, oh, you know, I'm doing like a live or something. Like, I don't have time. And I'm like, well, you're on social media right now. You have time. I promise. <laughs> if you weren't watching my video right now, you could be doing five minutes of meditation. That would help you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. The, the procrastination, right? Like it's, it's, it's a real thing. Um, and, it, and I believe the procrastination comes when those limiting beliefs start to pop up in your head. And right. you're like, I'm just going to avoid that. Right. And then you look back and you go, I'm just so busy. Like one of the things I teach and talk about, I, I talked about it at our last retreat is time management. Yeah. And the, the, the end up wrap of the time management was it's your choice. Like you own your calendar. It's your choice. If you don't get the things done, I'm done. Although it's 3 PM in Pennsylvania here. Um, I'm done most days, my, my work at 2 PM. And yeah. I've built a successful business and I do these things. And that's because I choose to just get it done and I don't procrastinate. And is it harder some days? Of course. Um, but that's just part of it. It's just understanding that we're creating these limiting beliefs for ourselves, and, and that's why yeah. I talk about the four pillars. And I love this conversation with you because I imagine most people see what you've done and you're on this show and they, then you come across as confident and all these things. And wow, she must have it all together. Wow. She must've hit it big because of the TV show. Wow. It must be so easy. Um, but the reality is I don't care who you are or where you are. And, and I can attest to this with all, some of my friends as well. Like you can have all the success in the world, but you still have limiting beliefs. It's yeah. just at a different level. Right. And so what do you do? I'm curious, what do you do with your limiting beliefs when they pop up? Because they are a consistent in everybody's life. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. I mean, first of all, having that, like creating the space in your day to journal, be, meditate, whatever, just be silent with your thoughts is what is going to actually create the awareness, you know, strengthen that awareness tool so that you can recognize when that limiting belief is popping up for you. And you can be like, Oh, how is this serving me? You know? And that's what I do. It's we, it's literally having conversations with yourself all day long, <laughs> more or less, like a thought comes up and you're like, wait, that is that like, is that mine? Is that, you know, is my mom or dad's, you know, it's really mm -hmm. having the radical awareness to where is that thought coming from? Why am I even thinking that? Is it mine? How can I shift it? What, how can I prove that it's true or not? And then obviously create the new belief from that. But it is, I mean, it, it is a daily practice. I find myself, you know, we're so sometimes um, on autopilot that things just fly out of our mouth sometimes. And I mean, I've done so much work around money mindset. And it's funny because I had a conversation with my sister a few weeks ago and she was about to invest in something. And I go, I was like, well, yeah, but how are you going to make the, like, that's great. You have the money right now, but like, how are you going to make the money next month? And I was like, Kelly, you, what would you tell yourself that? Like, you'll figure it out, make the investment. Yeah. Now you'll figure it out or the, the money will come, but make the investment. Now, you know, it's a good investment. You know, it's going to change your future, make the investment now, but that came out of my mouth. And for whatever reason, I didn't catch the awareness until a few days later, the program has closed. My sister didn't make the investment. And now I'm like, shit crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, here, you can like, <laughs> I'll help you. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we're just so on autopilot because it's in our, you know, going through like Bob Proctor's program right now. Like we're so, it's such a habitual behavioral, it's stuck in our paradigm. Like, so mm -hmm. if we can have that radical awareness to literally every thought that's coming in, we can choose. I mean, I have I say this, I have like deep rooted stories around like a relationship with food, but I know, like I grew up with a mom who had a, although she created a very good environment for us and my mom's constantly reading health books and nutrition books, but my mom also had a poor body image. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of that reflection onto and production projection, I guess, onto our family. Like, yes, she raised us to like eat our fruits and vegetables versus chips of cookies every day, but hearing that's bad for you. That's not good for you. That ingredient isn't going to, you know, it's going to make you bloated. It's going to whatever. Like I heard that my entire life. So I made it my story and I've, it's 30 years of hearing that story. So that's a part of my paradigm that I'm working on right now. And it's, I have the awareness, but I don't at this moment in time, I don't know if I have the tools to change it just yet, but it's all about awareness. So as long as we have the awareness, we can start making those changes, but some of those patterns are a lot deeper than others. So it's, you know, it takes time. It's not an overnight quick fix.
So I love, I love all that. And like, I'm telling you right now, we, have, we speak the same language in so many different ways. I mean, you know, we talked about the limiting beliefs on that clubhouse call and I talked about how in the, be- the, the end of last year, uh, I kind of acknowledged the fact that I battled being healthy throughout my life, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight. And, and finally at the end of last year, I go, why can I figure this out? I figured out the business. I figured out the relationships. I figured, and like my wellness, my health, I couldn't figure it out fully. Uh, and I traced it back to being 12 years old when I broke my hip. And the doctor said to me, you'll never be an athlete. Mm. Something as simple as that was resonating in the back of the head, my head. So whenever I would start to lose weight, I'd self-sabotage because yeah. in the back of my head, even though it wasn't a conscious thought, in the back of my head, I said, you can't be an athlete. And so I addressed that. And what I always say is I get uncomfortable. Like you said, make that investment, even though you might not be ready, make that investment, right? You talk about coaching. I mean, when you invest in a coach, which stretches you financially, you're going to get so much more out of that than you would somebody who's easy for you to afford. Cause at that point, you're just not putting in the work, right? So right. get uncomfortable. So I did 75 hard. I always say surround ah. yourself with the right people, whether it's, you know, uh, a coach, uh, uh, mastermind or like my girlfriend did 75 far with me, right? Surround yourself with the right people. And then the third thing is take action. So then I actually did it. Like I, I didn't say, just say I was going to, uh, I then take action. Right. And that's really what you've done to, to begin to build this great coaching business that you serve individuals often. Right. And you also talked about, you know, those daily routines or those daily habits you have. So I do ask a question every single interview because I have the honor of interviewing such successful people, however you want to define success. So my question for you is number one, what is your definition of success? Uh, and then what are three things you do every single day to ensure that success for yourself? Yeah, great question. Uh, my definition of success is being happy for one. <laughs> it is being happy, but what does happiness look like? That is definitely defined differently for every single one of us. Um, my definition of happy is being able to choose how I want to live my day to day, um, having the financial freedom, the time freedom, the schedule freedom, all of that. I mean, the location freedom, even um, being able to take my business on the road, which I kind of maybe planning to do soon. So Exciting. yeah. Um, but you know, but how do I do that? Um, I mean, <laughs> I used to be like a paper calendar person, but then I realized like carrying around this huge planner wasn't serving me anymore. So now I'm like, <laughs> I'm on the Google calendar. I'm digital. Um, but I mean, even just this past week, I, I, so like you were saying, like time management, like scheduling in things, like even if I have to put Kelly me time on my calendar mm. to, to make sure that I do it. I see because it, I'm actually seeing it. Yeah. Kelly. Cause sometimes again, if we aren't aware, we don't see it, we don't do it. We don't change the thing. So this week I put like an hour of, uh, creative time on my calendar every single day for the next three weeks. And yeah, I'll like reassess in three weeks from now. But I was like, wow, because I recognize that I wasn't doing the things like I, I do want to potentially be a millionaire one day and okay, well, how am I going to be a millionaire if I'm not doing the things I need to be doing to do that? So, you know, it's, it's really aligning myself. So I do do my, um, the lifesavers concept method that I learned from the miracle morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the whole routine I do every single day, the meditation, sometimes I'll do breath work in there, affirmation, visualization. And I actually have been doing this visualization for like three weeks now. Um, that has me visualizing like my dream home, my soulmate, my job, like what my career actually looks like the dynamic relationships of my friends and my family, uh, just everything. And it's just so cool. Um, so just like truly embodying that, um, which I think that's, the awesome thing about manifestation. So I'm constantly in the manifestation, uh, playbook right now. Um, and then reading a little bit, exercising a little bit. And I try to connect with nature every day too. Um, you know, because sometimes I live in a condo, so sometimes I don't necessarily get out of this cement structure, (laughs) but yeah. So time management, my lifesavers and practicing gratitude every day. I love it. I love it. I, I have a funny, remind me when we're done recording, I have a funny story about uh, Hal Elrod and the Miracle Morning. Yeah. Um, but I'll share that with you when I'm done recording. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny, but I, I wrap up every single interview with the same question. But before we get there, let's get to the important stuff. How do people get a hold of you? I know you're podcasting now. So send those podcast listeners to that show because uh, it, it's amazing. I've checked out a couple episodes. So uh, tell us all the good stuff. How do people find you? Yeah. So you can find me, connect with me on Instagram. It's at chase life with Kelly. My website is chase life together.com. Uh, Facebook. I have a group of women's community also chase life with Kelly podcast, chase life with Kelly, 
all the things Jason like with Kelly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Best way to connect with me and you know, they can email me, find, find my email too on there as well. So I wish I had a cool name, but unfortunately I was blessed with the name Justin Shank. So it can't be like Shank Life with Justin. Doesn't oh. <laughs> it doesn't work out that way. I love uh, it. No, it's it's so funny because someone was asking me, or no, I actually put up a poll on my Instagram recently about um I was like what do you guys like associate more do you associate Chase Life with Kelly or Kelly Chase and it was like 50 50 I was like well, that didn't help me at all but it's just because so many people have they call me Chase Life like just I mean this was like eight years ago I think that I created that title and but I don't know there's like a part of me it's like no I'm Kelly Chase like that's who I am yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so guys, make sure you go check all that stuff out. And Kelly, like I said, I wrap up every single interview with the same question. Since the show is called the Growth Now Movement, my question for you is in your life, what has been your biggest moment of growth? Uh, my biggest moment of growth is when I decided to, I would say change everything <laughs> was when I decided to change everything back in 2018. Um, like I, that was, I had left the nine to five, my last nine to five and literally, I, I mean, I had, I read more books in 2018 than I've probably had in my entire life. Like everything changed for me. I didn't date. I didn't like, it was, my life was different. I don't think I made out with a boy in like a year. <laughs> <laughs> everything changed. Yeah. But I mean, I, and to summarize the overarching theme of that is when I decided to choose me and stop choosing to please everyone else. That's, yeah. That's huge. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and your journey. I'm so excited to see where everything goes next. Uh, this has been phenomenal. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for being a part of the Growth Now movement. This is how you can really help me out. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. And let's grow this movement to epic heights. And it's all going to be because of you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week week.